Hello and welcome to The Sure Word. I'm your host, Sister Leia Gabor. Our ministry here is to bring you the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is God's grace which drives us to share this gospel. You see, God has given us, each one of us, a unique story of redemption. Our experience with God is so life-changing and so real that we want to share that experience to you. The experience of salvation and forgiveness is the story of grace. God's grace is empowering and it is the driving force behind our evangelism. Let's hear this powerful message from Bishop Jonathan for y'all. Our meditation this morning will be found in the book of Isaiah in chapter 6. In Isaiah in chapter 6 beginning in uh, verse 1 to 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Here we find the very dramatic account of uh, one of the Old Testament prophets' uh, calling. And uh, this was the passage that we find wherein the prophet Isaiah was uh, called by God to be his voice in his generation. Look at it in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were syrups, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the syrups flew to me with live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said see this has touched your lips your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for then i heard the voice from the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us and i said here am i send me this message is entitled, The Driving Force of Grace in Evangelism. The Driving Force of Grace in Evangelism. And we see grace all over this account of Isaiah's commissioning and calling. There's no way you can, you can miss grace. It's all over the life of Isaiah. It's imprinted in the manner by which God has called him. You see grace in the very life of this prophet who became the Lord's mouthpiece in his generation. And if ever there is something, brethren, that we must always consider so that we can become active participants in the work of evangelism and witnessing it is none other than grace grace should be our driving force to bring the gospel to our sin hurting world grace should be the one that should fuel our passion to bring others to that saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not let our hearts be motivated by anything or by anything less than grace. In the book of Philippians, we read 
that there are people who are preaching the gospel motivated and compelled by not so pure motivations. According to Apostle Paul, there are people who are preaching the gospel out of envy and rivalry in Philippians chapter 1 in verse 15. But here in the life of Isaiah, we see that grace should be the very force that should move us and mobilize us to reach those around us with the gospel of Christ. And for a good reason, because it is by grace that brought us salvation. If ever there is something that has brought us to where we are right now, it's none other than grace. By the grace of the Lord, we are what we are today. God's children, heirs of the Lord in His God's, in His true church because of God's grace. In the book of Ephesians in chapter 2, uh, in verse 6 and then in verse 8, the Apostle Paul emphasizes the the matchless role of grace in our salvation. It says there in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, it is by grace you have been saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is by grace you have been saved. And then in verse 8, the Apostle Paul reiterates the truth. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. In other words, it is not because of our efforts. It is not because of our will. It is not because of our piety or religiosity that enabled us to receive this favor from the Lord. The Apostle Paul says, it is a gift of God. God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, embraced us with His grace. And this is what we can see in the life of Isaiah. Isaiah was confronted by the power and force of grace. He was a man undeserving of God's love and acceptance, just like we are. According to his own confession, he was a man of unclean lips. He was a man of uncleanness. He was not deserving of divine acceptance. In fact, according to Isaiah, he was a woeful man. But it was in that state of woefulness. It was in that state of being unacceptable. God came upon him and embrace him with grace. To God be the glory. In God's grace, man is saved. In God's grace, the unacceptable becomes acceptable. In God's grace, the one who is lost is brought back home. The one who is dead is brought back to life. And thanks be to God, that was not the only story of Isaiah. This is also our story. This is our story. We were objects of God's wrath. We were sinners. God doesn't care how you look at yourself. People today look at themselves in, in, a, in a way that is not according to God's way of looking at things. But people, before the pure uh, and, and almighty God, we are simply but sinners. At our best, we are imperfect. But thanks be to God, we have a God who is gracious and compassionate. And this is something that we must bear in our hearts. The Bible says that we should not Treat God's grace in vain. In the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 6, in verse 1, As God's fellow workers, 
we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Now that you have received the grace of God, now that you are enjoying the grace of God, do not treat it in, you know, contemptuously. Do not devalue it or belittle it by failing to proclaim it or to share it to those around us. And this is something that is uh, happening in the lives of many Christians today. According to this one um, well-known pastor from Germany during the time of Adolf Hitler, his name is uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He coined the word cheap grace. Cheap grace. According to him, there are many Christians, especially during his time in Germany, that have cheapened grace. Rather than proclaim grace, rather than teach grace, rather than share the gospel of salvation and stand up for their faith, they have devalued it. They have cheapened it. According to this man, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, grace is Christianity without the cross. And that's what happened during the time of the Second World War. Christians in Germany did not take a strong stand against the monstrosity of the Nazi regime. They failed to sway the minds of their nation. And furthermore, according to Dietrich Bonhoeffer, not to talk is to talk, not to speak is to speak, and not to act is to act. They failed to make a stand for the gospel. They, they failed to make a stand for what is right. They have cheapened the grace. They have belittled the grace. They treated the grace as like it is just an ordinary thing. Oh, brethren, we should be thankful that we are now blessed with grace upon grace. We have been blessed with grace. If ever there is something that makes us right now, it is grace. Just come to think of it. God saved us by His grace. We did not break a sweat. We did not do what they say, blood, sweat, and tears to be saved. We were, we were even unsuspecting. We were even unaware that God was already saving us. But He saved us. And right now, if ever we are enjoying God's presence and God's calling and election in His church, if ever we are still standing in the faith, it is because of grace. Yes. Remember the words of uh, the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, according to him in chapter 5, that it is, uh, it is by grace that we stand. Romans in um, Chapter 5, in verse 2, Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. The power, the force that makes us stand is by the grace of God. And isn't it, this is our common expression in the church. It is our uh, well-coated expression by the grace of God. So how are you, brother? Oh, by the grace of God, still doing the work of the Lord. Oh, how are you now, sister? Oh, by the grace of the Lord, I am healed. We are what we are today because of the grace of God. According to the Apostle Paul, the Lord has changed me. And I am what I am today because of the grace that was in me. His grace, according to him, is very effective, very powerful, that it changed him. And look at how God is changing us. But then again, there is always that 
possibility that we could be treating God's grace in vain. And once we begin treating God's grace in vain, we could, we could stand to lose this grace. We could lose out on grace. In fact, according, there are several passages that tell us that you could stand to lose out from grace by our constant, if not willful, failure to embrace its demands and its requirements. Uh, for instance, let's look at the example of the Galatian people or the some of the Galatian brethren. The Galatian church was part of God's true church. But some of the people in that church miss out on the grace of God because they fell victim to the wrong gospel. Secondly, some of the Galatian brethren became carnal and worldly and very much secular. Look at what the Apostle Paul tells about them in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Strong words, huh? From the Apostle. Who has bewitched you? You are foolish. I don't think I will survive the ministry if I will always use those words foolish and bewitched. But that's how, that's how strong worded was this letter of the Apostle Paul. And I don't think Paul said this with a smile. You foolish. <laughs> I, I think he said that with a good measure of sternness. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? There's the word foolish again. After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? These Galatian brethren definitely fell victim to the trap of wrong gospel. And there are so many false preachers today. We praise God that we have received the right gospel. But then again, we must make sure that we are preserving this grace of God. In the book of, once again in Galatians, look at what happened to them. In verse 4, you have fallen away from grace. You could fall away from grace. If you will constantly and unrepentantly engage in actions that treat the grace of God in vain. And this is something that is missing in the preaching in the many pulpits of our country today. They, 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 these preachers preach as if grace is inexhaustible. In one way, grace is inexhaustible if you will keep on clinging to grace, but once you begin defying grace, once you begin trampling on grace and stepping on it and mocking it, like what this Galatian brethren did, you, they will also fall in the same situation and predicament. Paul says, my dear fellow workers, do not treat God's grace in vain. This is the reason, brethren, why we must continue to live in grace. And the grace of God is best demonstrated in the gospel. The gospel 
the message of salvation, the message that brought us peace, the message that brought us liberty from our sins. The grace of God is in the gospel. And we ought to share the gospel into our world. And if ever there is something, brethren, that the world needs today, it is grace. Definitely, I could use grace. And I know, you know, that we could all use grace. We needed grace. The world needs grace. How can the world save itself? By their technology, by their education, by their religiosity? No. None of these things could ever make man be acceptable unto him. The only way that man could be made acceptable is when a man cling by his grace. We must make sure that we are not treating this grace of God in vain. We must stop paying lip service by God's grace, by God's grace. The Bible is teaching us to live by grace. It's not only to experience the power of God in our lives, but also share this gospel to the world and share this gospel to our friends and to our family. This is the time for us to really shed abroad this message of grace. And we praise God because the leaders in the church are constantly counseling us to spread this grace. That's why the, uh, the prophet Isaiah, upon receiving grace, the next step that he engaged in was to go and to speak in God's behalf. Do not think that God's grace is simply make us too self-absorbed. It's great that we have this grace of God changing us and transforming us. But ultimately, this grace must be proclaimed and shared to others. To God be the glory. This is what the gospel preaching is all about. The preaching of the gospel is sharing this grace to those who needed it. And a lot of people today are really needing this grace of God. The, the prophet Isaiah saw the need to go forth. He saw the urgency to speak this grace. So when he heard the call of God, he said, who will go for us? He said, here I am, send me. Amen. The believer who lives in grace will always put himself forward. He would always step up and say, God, use me. God, utilize me. This is what grace should enable us to do. The grace of God is empowering. And God has written for us a wonderful story of redemption. From our broken state, He made us whole. From despair, He gave us hope. From being enslaved to sin, He made us servants of Christ. And we want you to experience it for yourself. God has written your story from the very beginning. This moment is no coincidence. He chose to meet you right here, right now. Maybe you are going through a dark time and you are barely hanging on. You have so many questions that are left unanswered. And maybe you even question God and His plans for you. But there is hope, and that hope is in the gospel of Christ. Why don't you make that choice today? Come to the Lord. Receive the grace He is holding out for you. Christ is offering forgiveness. Whoever you are and whatever you have done, He will forgive you if you come to Him with all your heart. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ today. He wants you to know the life-changing power of His grace and salvation. And we can help. Call us for prayer and counseling. Join us at a location near you. And if you're looking for a new church home, 
this is the perfect place for you to start or even renew your relationship with God. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, God bless you.